Rent got too expensive, had to leave LA So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate Playing poker every day Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet I have two cool meetup games to announce to you guys. If you're in the Chicagoland area, I haven't done one yet. It's my hometown. So you guys are going to want to come out on December 29th. From 6 p.m. to 12 a.m., we'll be playing a one two fifty to $300 buy-in. Although I expect the straddles and the buy-ins to get larger as the night goes on. It's at Rockford Charitable Games, and the address is posted on the screen. Then on January 6th, I'm doing a dual meetup game in Los Angeles with Lex O Poker. Pretty cool opportunity for you guys to play at the Hustler Casino with us. Going to be a great event. 2-3 is the stakes and 200 to 700 is the buy-in. Come out to Chicago, come out to Los Angeles, come meet me, we'll have some drinks and some laughs and let's get into the video. We're getting cabin fever in Austin. Let's change up the scenery back three hours north to Dallas. On our way up, we check out Magnolia Farms in Waco, Texas. It's a great spot to take your girlfriend or wife. Pro tip for all the guys watching to make a mental note, check it out. We then continue on our drive north and stop at HTO. Shout out to Charlie at Kojak's for putting me onto their blueberry sweet tea. We had to cop the full gallon. We finally drop into the 1-2 at Poker House Dallas in for $500. And before we can get our camera out to film, we get into a $750 pot. Our kings hold versus ace queen on a queen high flop. Let's go. First in a note, we look down at queen jack from the small blind. The $5 button straddles on. There's two calls and I raise it up to $30. Only the initial caller puts in the call for $25 more dollars and we're off to a flop heads up, which comes queen high. Queen 10-6 with two spades. He only has around $55 left in his stack. I think he's going to rip it all in, so I decide to check, expecting him to go all in. That's not what he does. He checks behind and we're off to the turn. Turn gives us trips. It comes the queen of hearts. Expect to have the best hand like 100% of the time here. I bet up $15, looking to get his stack in by the river. He could also just rip it all in on us here on the turn. He decides to go for the first route and put in the call, which brings a seven of clubs on the river. Nothing to do other than to put him all in for his effective $40. Opponent thinks about it for a second before sliding all of his red chips into the middle. No good sir, I turn over my queen jack offsuit. He's not going to show his cards, he mucks and we're up $460 early on this session. We look down at the same hand, queen jack offsuit, this time from the small blind again. The hijack raises it up to $15, the cutoff and button both find a call. I decide to put in the call as well. The big blind calls and a limper puts in the call. We're going six ways to a flop. Looking for a favorable flop as Andrew Nimi would say and we find one when it comes king, 10, 9, bang, we flop a straight. Pretty draw heavy board though. There's two clubs on board. So optimally we would like to see a bet on this flop. I'm not gonna lead out here. It just looks way too strong. I decide to check, hoping one of the players finds a bet. We can go for the check raise and start piling in some money. Unfortunately though, the action checks around. That's not the greatest situation. Situation. We don't want to see a club on the turn, which does not come. It comes the deuce of hearts. Great brick card for us. Now I need to start doing the betting myself when the action get checked on the flop. I lead out here for $50, hoping to get looked up by at least one opponent. Good news for us is when the hijack decides to stick in the call, so we're off to the river, which is another blank. It comes a four of spades. I'm thinking about my options here and how I get the most money in the pot. If I bet out here for $125, we're probably only going to get called by sets and two pairs. It's unlikely likely that the opponent has any of those because he checked behind on the flop. You'd think if he had a set of nines, tens, king 10, king 9, he'd probably bet the flop considering there's a flush draw on board and the action check to him. So when he checks the flop and checks called my turn bet, it's likely he has a missed club draw or he has a one pair type hand both of which are not going to call a river bet here. However, if I go for a check, it's likely he could find a bluff here, thinking I was trying to steal it on the turn. That's the route I go for. Let's see if it pays off. Unfortunately, the opponent decides to check behind. He turns over queen nine of spades. I'm going to show the straight, which is obviously way good here. Interesting to see his hand and seeing if he was going to call my river bet. He was not, so I still like my decision to go for the check raise there on the river. We're going to take down that $190 pot up over $500 on the session.
you guys like unstandard play and crazy hands, you're gonna love this next hand. I look down at four or five of diamonds and a crazy action player from under the gun raises it up to $35. The hijack and myself both find a call here, so going three ways to the flop, which comes 993 with two diamonds. We have a backdoor straight draw, a front door flush draw, pretty great situation for us, even though we just have five high. Under the Gun continues the aggression and bets out for $75. It's a little bit of a tricky situation here because we're in between two opponents. If we put in the call here, we could risk the situation of getting raised by the hijack, but I still think my hand is pretty strong. Hit a diamond and a six or deuce on the turn. We're gonna be loving life. So I decided to put in the call, risking the situation of hijack coming over the top. He hasn't though, he mocks his cards and we're off to the turn, which gives us more outs. We still have five high, but now we have an open-ended straight draw. Actions on the under the gun player who bets out now for $100. Pretty strong line from him, betting pre-flop and then betting flop into two other opponents, continuing on the turn into me for $100. But we have an open-ended straight draw, basically a straight flush draw here because we have a straight and a flush draw in terms of the amount of outs. I'm putting the under the gun on a pocket pair type holding. Tens through aces obviously would play this way, maybe even pocket eights or pocket sevens, although I think those might slow down here on the turn. We could have a lot of nines in our range, seven, nine, 9, 8, 9, 10, 9. So given the fact that we have 5 high, I don't want to just call here and then the river comes a diamond. He checks it over to us. We bet and he folds. So I decide to go for a raise here, hoping to get a fold. That's the best case situation. However, if he gets called, we could still hit one of our many outs on the river and get some value. I decide to go for max pain or max pleasure for us. I jam all in for $550 effective. I have him covered. Actions on him and he's thinking about his options. He doesn't think too long though before finding a call. Oh no, we're in trouble here. We're going to need to suck out on the river in this $1,400 pot. Please dealer, one time. What does it bring in? Bang! The straight comes in. The six of hearts on a paired board, hoping the opponent does not have a hand like deuces, threes, or sixes. I turn over my six high straight, showing the table. They're pretty disgusted, and the opponent, sure enough, turns over pocket eights. One of the hands I mentioned on the turn, although I discredited him from having that hand, considering I called him on the flop. No worries though, we end up getting there, sucking out on the river. $1,355 coming our way. What a brutal way to lose that hand. Sheesh. Real quickly, you guys, it appears that 67% of you guys aren't subscribed yet. We're at 28.3 thousand followers so far, trying to get to 30,000 by the end of the year. If I did my math correctly, out of the 67% of you guys that are not subscribed, if only 10% of you guys hit the subscribe button right now, we'd hit our goal by today or by the end of the year. So guys, do me a solid if you're enjoying this video so far. They take a long time to make, so hit the subscribe button and let's jump right into the next hand. Next hand and note, we look down at 7-5 of spades. Spoiler alert. Something funny happens at the end of this hand, so stay tuned for that. I'm in the cutoff and middle position raises it up to $7. There's three callers to me. I decide to put in the call and two others do as well. So we're off to the flop, extremely multi-weighed, which comes 8-6-5 with two spades. We have an open-ended straight draw and a pair. Life is pretty good here in middle position, bets out for $7. Three callers to me and I decide to pile some money in here. We obviously don't have the best hand right now, but we have a lot of equity, a lot of outs to come on the turn. I raise it up to $45. If I win the hand now, that's great. The opponent has a set or maybe already a straight. We're going to try to get some money in and hit a nine or four of spades on the turn. Only the small blind puts in the call and the turn comes the nine of hearts. We obviously make a straight, so that's pretty good for us. Our seven high is no more. Actions on the small blind and he bets out now into us. A donk bet for $55. Actions on me. Do we go for the raise again? I don't really think so. We have a straight now. We also have the flush draw to go along with it. I decided to put in the call for $55 and we're off to the river which comes the deuce of hearts. The opponent now checks it over to me and I need to go for value. I bet out for $115. The opponent and I are friendly. I've met him here at Poker House before and he asked me, Alex, you have 10-7 of spades. Which one? Alex, you got it's a, yeah. I don't answer at first, but then it's getting late. I decide to play some games with him. I go to turn over the five of spades, but what's that? I turn over the seven of spades. I quickly flip it back over, realizing the horrible mistake I just made. I just showed him I had a straight, the seven high straight. Only a heart draw or seven ten would have me beat. What am I doing? It's 3 a.m. I need to go home. 
The opponent laughs and obviously finds a fold. He ends up showing me 3-4 of clubs, so he rivered a straight as well. If I ended up showing him a 5 of spades, it's likely I would have got paid off for 115 more dollars. It's open season to roast Wolfgang down in the comments. What a boneheaded mistake. Either way though, we're going to take down that $277 pot. Bummed I missed out on 100 more dollars of value. With that being said, it's getting late. No worries, I'm playing again tomorrow, so don't click away from the video. We rack up our chips and head to the cage. Can't make a mistake like that and keep playing. I get out of the game for $1,618, so a net profit of $1,118. Funny side note is the cage ran out of $100 bills, so they paid me out in all 20s. Yes, that's right. I got $1,600 essentially in all 20s. The next day, we check out the historic Dallas Farmer's Market and then head over to White Rock Lake to check out the scenic views. My buddy Trevor and I buy last minute tickets to the Mavericks Heat game and it was my first time seeing Luca play, so that was pretty awesome. We also saw a wild Mark Cuban in his natural habitat. I'm a big Shark Tank fan, so that was sick. The Heat got the win, and we saw Bam give away a shooting sleeve to a group of young Mavs fans. It's been around 15 hours though since we played last. We're back at Poker House Dallas for some more action. It's the same game as last night. We're into the 1-2 for $500, and first hand to note, we look down at pocket jacks from the cutoff. $5 button straddle is on. There's two calls to me. I'm not going to be playing for $5 with the jiggities. I raise it up to $25. Unfortunately, though, three players put in the call, looking for a pretty safe board. It's not going to be easy to do so when we have jacks. We get an interesting one when it comes 875 all clubs. We have two red jacks, so that's not ideal as well. When the big blind and the straddle both check, the middle position bets out for $25, and all three of us put in the call. Bringing in the fourth club on the turn, it comes a three of clubs. The action gets checked around on the turn, which brings in the nine of hearts on the river. The action gets checked all the way around to me on the river, and when there's four clubs on board, I three bet preflop. I'm going to have the ability to represent all the strong clubs, ace, king, King, queen of clubs are all going to be in my range. For that reason, I decided to turn my jacks into a bluff here, trying to get any small club to fold. Additionally, the opponents would probably have to fold two pair as well, and they'd probably consider folding a set as well. $125 should do the trick. Unfortunately, though, the big blind decides to put in the call. I turn over my jacks. He's going to have to turn over his cards, and he shows us a hand I did not expect him to show up with here. A6 of spades. He rivered a straight and still finds a call, even though there's four clubs on board. Pretty interesting call by him. Got to give him props for sniffing out the bluff. Not sure how he figured that out, but we're already stuck $175 on the session when we lose that $450 pot. I rebuy for $260 more dollars and look down at 10-8 of hearts from the cutoff. Two limps to me and I raise it up to $20. And the small blind and both the limpers decide to put in the call going four ways to the flop. Flop comes king, 10, 8, bang, we flop two pair. Pretty draw heavy board. There's a lot of gutters to straights. There's also the front door diamond draw. So when the action's on me, I bet out for $35 into the $80 pot. Two out of the three opponents find a call, so we're going three ways to the turn. Turn's not a great one. It comes a diamond, the five of diamonds to be specific. Small blind checks, action's on middle position. He checks it over to me. Do you guys go for a bet here or check behind when the diamond draw comes in? I like to go for the latter route. I check and we're off to the river, which brings in the five of hearts. Not a great card, it pairs the board. Counterfeits are two pair. Any opponent with a king, queen, king, jack type of hand now has two pair better than us. Pretty disgusting run out and the small blind leads out for $45. Middle position gets out of the way and even though we have two pair, we just have two rags. I throw them into the middle and show the table. 0 for 2 on the session and stuck around $200 so far. <laughs> Okay, we need some momentum now. I look down at ace five of hearts from early position and raise it up to $20. Getting four calls isn't the worst situation. We're looking to get into a cooler, a large pot here, and we're off five ways to the flop. Flop's pretty good for us. It comes six, deuce, eight with two hearts. We have the ace high flush draw, and that's pretty great. I'm in early position. I decide to start with a check. There's four other opponents in the hand. One of them has to put in a bet. Even if it gets checked around, that's not the end of the world. Seeing a free card, we could improve to the nut flush. That's exactly what happens when the action gets checked around so we're off to the turn which brings in the eight of hearts bang we turn the nut flush 
The board is paired, that's not exactly ideal, but we're not complaining with our heart flush. Under the gun leads out for $45. I could go for a raise here, but I decide to call, trying to bring in another opponent or two. Nobody else finds the call, and we see the seven of hearts on the river. Pretty disgusting. Now the board's paired, there's four hearts on board. We obviously have the ace of hearts in our hand, but if the opponent turned a worse flush, he now could feel unsure about his hand, and sure enough, he shows us some of that, and he checks it over to us. Need to be going for value here, so I bet I half pot for $100. If he has a flush, it still might be hard to fold, but nevertheless, he does find a fold. We're down $85 on the session, but we're going in the right direction. We now have $700 in our stack. We look down at ace queen offsuit. I raise it up to $25 over a few limpers and a straddle. We get two callers, so we're going three ways to the flop. With $80 in the pot, the flop comes queen high, queen nine six rainbow, pretty great situation for us. I lead out for $25 and no one wants to get rid of their hearts just yet. Both put in the call and we're off to the turn. When the turn comes to 10 of clubs, it could be a scare card as eight jack, king jack, and seven eight now make a straight. There are all four suits on board, not worried about a backdoor flush draw, so I decide to go for for a little bit more value here on the turn. $155 in the middle and I bet out for 65. The under the gun gets out of the way, but the button wants to see what the river card brings in. He puts in the call, 285 in the middle and the river comes with three of spades. Shouldn't change anything here. I think I'm gonna have the best hand. I think I'm gonna have the best hand. For that reason, I bet out for $85. Looking to get one last bet of thin value through. And now the opponent snap rips it all in for $450. How is this a bluff here? When you find yourself in a spot like this, it's important to think of all the hands he could be doing this for value with, and then think of all the hands he could be bluffing here with. Taking that into consideration, he's gonna be doing this here probably with his sets, his straights, and maybe his two pairs. The bluffs that he has could be one pair with a straight draw type hand. There were no flush draws on the flop or the turn, so I think his hands here on the river, and given how fast he shoved all in, just weighed him a lot more towards strength. So it's tough laying down top pair, top kicker here, but at the end of the day, it's still just one pair. So I find a tight fold, the opponent mucks his cards, but I was chatting him up the rest of the night, hoping to get some information out of him, and he later told me he had jack eight, so he turned the straight. I'm really happy that I saved almost four $400 on the river there by not paying him off with one pair. It's pretty much as good as winning $400 in my opinion. Last hand of the night and it's a good one. The solver comes out at the end so you know we get into an interesting spot. We look down at ace jack of clubs in early position raises it up to $15. Not gonna be playing for $15. I three bet him here a little 3x to $45 and the player to my left puts in the four bet to $90. He throws four green chips out there. Early position gets out of the way, but it's a min raise to me. Even though we're putting the middle position on a very strong hand, we have ace jack suited. It's only 45 more dollars. We're getting insane price, so I decided to put in the call looking for a good flop, which comes above average. Ace eight four with one club. We have top pair with a jack kicker. Nothing for me to do other than check my entire range over to the middle position player. He'll have all the aces through queens, ace king, ace queen as well. So when he leads out for $150, our hand is obviously too strong to fold. We can't be calling preflop, flopping a pair of aces and then folding, so I call the $150. Looking for a safe turn card which comes the five of hearts. Really shouldn't change too much. I don't expect the opponent to have six, seven or do three in his hand. So I check it over to him. If the opponent had a hand like aces, ace, king or ace, queen, I expect him to bet here. All of his pocket pairs underneath the ace would probably check behind. So when I check it to him and he checks behind, I'm putting him on one of those strong pocket pair type hands or most likely ahead at the moment. Maybe a hand like ace, queen might check behind here for deception. But when the seven of clubs comes off on the river, that seems like a pretty safe card as well. We could be mixing in some leading here on this river, trying to get value from any kings or queens. However, we're also going to value own ourselves against ace king and ace queen. So I don't really like that option. I decided to check it over to him. If he wants to turn his hand into the bluff, we're giving him the rope to do so. And I'm not sure if that's what he's trying to do here, but then he rips it all in for $290 effective. I have them covered here and I think about my options for a second. Like I mentioned earlier, we jump into the solver and look at the board. With our entire range here, we're supposed to be folding 51% of the time, but we jump down to our hand, ace jack of clubs, and it's pretty much a toss up between calling and
and folding, giving the edge to calling 52% of the time. If you look at our entire range, ace eight is obviously gonna go for the raise having two pair. A little ace jack, a little ace 10 is also gonna raise an ace seven through ace five suited of the diamond and heart variety are gonna go for a raise as a bluff here as well. Pretty interesting to note. So let's jump back into the hand. Obviously the solver likes a call or fold around the same amount of the time, but I'm stuck in the session and I didn't come to Poker House Dallas and go on this road trip to be folding a pair of aces. So I stick in the call for $290. The opponent sheepishly turns over his hand, pocket tens. That's no good, sir. I flip over my pair of aces. We're gonna scoop down this $1,130 pot at the end of the night, ending the night with a big win and finally getting back into the green. All right, you guys, that wraps up this session here at Poker House Dallas, one of my favorite places to play in all of Texas. Got into this 1-2 game for 500. Got stuck a little bit early, had to buy in for $260 more, but then ended up in that last hand, as you guys saw, winning a large double up there. And then some got out for $1076, so a profit of $316. And don't forget the $1118 win from the night before, bringing our grand total from the two sessions up to $1434. On that session, a win's a win, and the chart's going in the right direction. If you guys like this video and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. We're trying to get the 30K subs by the end of the year. Drop a like on this video, leave a comment. I try to respond to every positive comment that you guys leave. I really appreciate it. Share this with a friend who likes poker vlogs but may not have heard about Wolfgang. A lot of cool things in the works. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Good luck on the felt. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.